Ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to show you the W6N5000. The W6N5000 is an electronic sewing machine from W6 Wertarbeit with a 10 years warranty also on the electronics and, as always with W6 Wertarbeit, it comes with detailed operating instructions for ease of understanding. We have included 323 sewing programs for you here. That's quite something. We have a new method of loading the bobbin. We no longer need to put the thread through the bobbin from the inside for the thread to stay on, but we can hook the thread in here and cut it at the same time. Here you see that this machine does not have a thread tensioner anymore. The machine sets this fully automatically via display and touchscreen. That's very nice. A new feature is our thread cutter. This is not because you might not have any scissors at home, but when you cut the thread at the end of the seam now, both thread tails, the upper thread and the bobbin thread, are left on the wrong side of the fabric. This is very important in patchworking. Stepless speed control is also included. And the turtle button again. The turtle button is used to instantly reduce the sewing speed for particularly tricky seams. And of course, here we have the needle stop up-down button. This is the backstitching button and this is the start-stop button. This means that you can also operate this machine without a foot pedal and then adjust the speed by this slider. The machine has LED lighting that will last for the entire service life of the machine. Back here is the threader that engages and waits for you. Next to the bobbin case is the thread automatic unit. With this bobbin thread automatic unit, you thread the bobbin thread, cut it off and you don't need to bring it up manually anymore. You can start sewing right away. It goes without saying that this machine has a free arm. The special feature of the W6N5000 is this touch screen. That means that you can adjust your entire machine here simply by pressing the buttons and symbols on the control panel. Suppose you're looking for a particular stitch pattern. You can select it here. And there's always what I call the emergency button. If you can't remember where you are, press that and it'll get you back to regular straight stitch. Here you can choose which of the 60 utility stitches you want to use. You can either browse the pages. You can press the arrow buttons here and the machine will show you the pages. Up here you can see the numbers. You can find those numbers again up here. This is number 15, the triple zigzag stitch. And if you look down now, you see 15 again here, triple zigzag stitch. Now, if you don't want to use those buttons, you can also wipe the display just as you would with your smartphone. Just wipe left or right. The display will browse forward or backward. And when you found your desired program, just tap it. Then the program menu is opened here. The corresponding program number is displayed and you are always shown the required presser foot with the letter that is also embossed on the foot itself. So the feet are displayed here as they are actually marked. You can choose whether you want to do spot stitching, whether you want to use a twin needle only 2 mm wide. And of course you can change the stitch width and the stitch length here the way you want it. And if you want to exit the program menu, just press the return button. That will get you out. Of course, it can happen that the automatic thread tension does not necessarily suit the fabric. That can happen sometimes when you have extremely thick or thin fabrics or very stretchy ones. But normally you don't need to change anything. Nevertheless, you can intervene here with plus and minus. You may want to do sharing, for example. Then you have to change the tension. So, this machine has one more special feature. We have included alphabet stitches. It has two versions. One is regular print and the other is cursive. Now, let's talk threading the machine. Place the spool on the spool pin. Then, position the spool stopper on top of it so the spool cannot slide off. Fold down the pin and you're ready to thread. Start at 1. Insert the thread at 1, guide it down and around the silver hook. Guide it back up and wind it around the little disc. Pull that really tight so the thread rests under the pretension disc. The next step is interesting. Now we got something new here. This is where the bobbin is placed. Wind your thread around a few times. Be generous, don't just do it once or twice. And now here comes the crucial point. Pull the thread around here. You see that? When the thread is around the hook, it will be cut to length and clamped at the same time. When you now press the foot pedal, the machine will start winding. And at the end, it will also cut the thread. The key point really is to guide the thread behind this hook so it can be cut off and clamped. This means that you no longer need to pull the thread through the bobbin from the inside to the outside. The display also tells you what you're just doing. It shows that I'm currently winding the bobbin.
Let's go a little faster. You see, the machine has finished. You can see now, the bobbin is full. This metal hook up here signals when the bobbin is full and the display tells you to take your foot off the pedal. I'll do that. Then the display changes. To thread the sewing machine, it's most important that you press the needle position button twice, needle down and needle up. Now the needle is up. The hook is in the correct position. The needle is in the correct position. Now you can start threading. Pay a little attention when threading. It's very important. If you don't do this right, the machine won't sew properly. Just pull this end. So start at number one. Hook the thread in at number one. Go down and around the hook. Up here is two, then three back there, down to four and up to five. At five, pause briefly and please pull a little on both sides to make sure the thread slides in properly. Now guide the thread fully down, hook it into the thread clamp just above the needle. Push down the automatic threader and it will engage. Hook the thread behind this little hook, guide it to the metal of the threader to the back and up here you hang and cut the thread. Here the thread is then held in place. All you have to do now is press the threader again and the threader will pull a loop to the back. Please pull the loop out to the back, not the front. There. That's a bit tricky. There it is. Now place the thread under the foot and to the back. The bobbin thread is threaded as follows. Push this little back button to the right. Place the bobbin on the work surface so that it turns counterclockwise when you pull the thread. See, this is correct. Drop the bobbin into the case, then follow the arrow and guide it around here. When you reach this point, hold the bobbin and pull the thread so that it slips into tension, then guide it forward and cut it off. And you're done. Close the cover. So, now you can start sewing, no problem at all. Just put a piece of fabric under the foot and you can start right away. No need to bring up the bobbin thread, the machine does that by itself. Let me first show you what great jeans seams the machine can do. Let's select program number one. This is straight stitch. This is also set automatically or you can set it via the quick select button. But we need a different stitch length. The length is pre-programmed at 2.5. For jeans seams use stitch length 4. Then you need the free arm. That means you take off the slide on table, slide your fabric over here, your trouser leg and now you're ready to go. Now let me start sewing. You see, the machine is really sturdy and it can also go over bulky seams. You see, nothing rattles, nothing wobbles. Just lift the needle, take it out, done. You can see that here. The seam looks really neat, no skip stitches. That's perfectly all right. You can also use the straight stitch in a completely different way. The machine comes with a variety of feet, for example, the hemming foot. Just install the hemming foot. We'll stick with straight stitch and now we just need a piece of fabric, put this under the foot and then we can sew a very nice rolled hem. You can see on the fabric that stitch length 4 is still set. That's obviously very long for this. Now you can go down from 4 a bit. 2.5 will be alright. Look, it works just fine. The foot automatically rolls in the fabric and this foot is included in the scope of delivery. Let's stop. The foot goes up. Take out the fabric, cut the threads, and you see how neat this is. That's it, folded over twice and stitched really close to the edge. So the next thing we want to do, I want to show you how to use the quarter inch foot and the quilting guide that are both included with the machine. You just stick this quilting guide in back here. Wait, let me check. Bear with me. Like this. Now this guide always gives you the same distance to the edge or between stitch lines. Let me first show you the quarter inch foot. You align your fabric edge with the edge of the foot, so you always have a distance of a quarter of an inch. I'll do it this way, just as an example. The seam allowance for American patchwork pattern is always a quarter of an inch. Let's stop. Now, when you plan on sewing several parallel seams at the same spacing, you can also use the markings on the throat plate as an orientation. The markings are at up to 20 mm from the needle. Now, you simply adjust the quilting guide to the distance that you need and use it to sew parallel seams. 
Look, make sure the guy does not press your fabric too hard. Now you're good to go. Let's stop. Lift the foot, take out the fabric and cut the threads. Now you see, you have two perfectly spaced parallel stitching lines. That's what this was originally intended for. Remove the quilting guide and change the foot. Let me show you how to do a buttonhole. Buttonhole is easy to select. How do you access the programs? Press this buttonhole to access the utility stitches. Then you can browse. There are our first buttonholes. Which one do I want? Well, let's use this keyhole shaped one here. Yes, that's fine, number 52. The button goes in there at the back. So this sets the button size. Install the buttonhole foot. What's important here is now, we've set the program and we've installed the foot with the button. There's a probe here. This probe has to be pulled down so that the machine can sense how big the buttonhole will be. Position your fabric. So let's see. As I said, the machine senses the size of the button and does the size of the buttonhole accordingly. You just have to press the foot pedal. Both stitching lines are sewn in one direction. The machine starts at the back and sews forward. Then it sews the round bit at the front and moves back. So when the machine is done, it stops on its own. It sounds a beep. Lift the needle, take out your fabric and cut the threads. Look, it's a great buttonhole. Just cut the thread tails. Slightly keyhole shaped, because that's what I selected. Another interesting thing is overlocking. You always need overlock stitches. Of course, you need a matching foot for this, which the machine will display. That means we need program number 16 now. Access the utility stitches and browse to 16. One more. Now I select 16 and I can see presser foot C is required. And I see up here it's got the C on it too. That means I already have my presser foot. The machine displays the automatic settings, a width of 5.5, a length of 2.6. Whenever you use foot C, please do me a favor, don't reduce the stitch width, because it has a bar in the middle, otherwise the needle will hit this bar. Let's use this blue fabric to show you what the machine can do. Overlocking means sewing and overcasting the fabric in one step. Lower the foot and let's go. You guide the fabric along the presser foot guide. In this way you get a perfectly straight seam. The machine sews over the bar in the middle of the presser foot. The bar prevents the fabric from rolling in. Now let's see. Here's the actual seam. And here is the finished edge. Now when you turn the right side out, everything looks great. There you have it. Done. The next thing we want to do is some free motion embroidery and darning. That's quite interesting. For this you have to unscrew the presser foot from the shank. Unscrew the entire holdup. So, just take it off completely. This part here is loosened with the screw. You remove that and install this foot. This is the embroidery and darning foot, or you can use it for quilting. Free motion embroidery, darning, quilting, you name it. Here's another thing, you should lower the feed dog. The feed dog lowering switch is located here. This symbolizes the throat plate and the teeth of the feed dog. Normally the teeth protrude through the throat plate. Now you switch to the other side. The teeth have been lowered under the throat plate and you can freely guide your fabric. Let's pick a nice stitch. We'll sew a little zigzag. How do we set the new program? Press this button and browse to zigzag. There, that's a lovely zigzag stitch. So let's set that. The stitch length doesn't matter because we no longer have a feed dog. I'll reduce the width to 3.5. Now you can freely guide your fabric. Before starting, it's best to pull the upper thread through the foot. All right, lower the foot. It's tightly screwed to the shank. Let's go. So now you can also write with this option if you want to. You see, I'm guiding my fabric. So, jetzt können wir richtig auch schön was schreiben, wenn wir das möchten. So, Sie sehen, ich führe selber. The machine cannot guide at present because the feed dog is lowered. Now, of course, you can be really creative with this option. Let's do it like this. Stop again. Raise the foot and take a look. Here you see, this is an H for Hamelin, our location. Now, of course, you can also sew other stitches. Let's try out the straight stitch. Look, this is what a professional quilt looks like. 
Here in the middle you see the free motion quilted area. Let me just show you that on this little piece of fabric. This is how free motion stitching works. It's absolutely comfortable and you are free to stitch your own ideas. Alright, needle back up, take it out, cut the threads and done. It's basically the same as here. With this quilt, there is a batting between the fabric layers and that's how you get this classic quilt look. For the next thing, I have to change the foot. Here's the thing with quilts. Normally you have two layers of fabric and the batting in between and all three layers are shifting and moving, which makes it really difficult to sew them together. For that purpose we have included a walking foot. It's installed in the same way as the free motion embroidery and darning foot. That means we have to slide it onto the shank. Now let me show you something. I've tightened this screw here. That's absolutely correct. But now here's something special. I'm going to have to turn the hand wheel a little bit, so the foot comes down a bit. And this lever is the drive. It drives the two-part foot and it's important for this lever to be on top of this needle screw. Make sure it's not positioned under the screw, then it doesn't work. The foot will not work properly because it has no drive. Now this foot helps feed the top layer of the fabric, so you can sew sticky materials such as leather or vinyl. Or you could use it for making bags of faux leather. You see, the walking foot feeds the upper fabric layer. Why isn't it moving? Oh sure, I forgot something. I didn't bring up the lower feet dock. We need that too, otherwise it won't work. We did free motion embroidery darning. So now it's working. See, this foot practically walks over the top layer of fabric and thus feeds it. Now, when you're working with sticky fabrics or need to keep the layers from shifting because you have matching stripes or checks, always use this walking foot. It's included with the machine and really worth it. Let's stop and take it out. That's it. Let's remove that again. This foot is suitable for all stitch programs. No limits there. That's not a problem. Now let me just quickly find my screwdriver. There it is. Loosen the screw. Simply pull it off the shank. Now for the regular feet, remember to first install the holder. This holder is the clamp for all other feet. Slide it onto the presser foot shank, like this. Slide it fully up to the stop and tighten the screw. So let's do something completely different now. Now this machine comes with a lot of antique, nostalgic, decorative, satin stitches and also quilting stitches. The important thing here is, when you sew these, you always have to use some interfacing or stabilizer. This is very important. This also applies to sewing letters, because this machine can also do lettering stitches. And of course you need to use the right presser foot. This is always presser foot B. It has a hollow channel at the bottom. Your stitches are fed through that channel more easily. Place your fabric, lower the presser foot and now let's write something for instance. This is my single layer of fabric. If you use single layers of fabric, always use some kind of backing with it. Otherwise, the stitching won't look neat. All right, lower the foot. So what are we going to write? I'm accessing the letters. That's back here. There are the letter stitches. Let's write an, for example. So I select the A and continue. Now first are the uppercase letters, then the special characters and also the lowercase letters. Now we need an N and another N and finally an E. Press twice and there's the E. Now, here's a special feature of this machine. You can combine lettering stitches and other decorative stitches. That means you access the decorative stitches. You can select it here. Sorry, that was wrong. I need this. Now, let's choose one of these. Let's see which one is pretty. Choose anything you like. A little bow, maybe. All right. Ah, I like this bow here. Let's stitch that behind Anne. Now all you have to do is press the foot pedal. The machine will sew exactly as programmed. With this setting, the machine will sew an once and a bow and stop. Now when you press this button, the machine sews the set stitches in a continuous loop. An, the bow, an, the bow and so on. Let's do that to see how it looks. Here comes the bow, and because I pressed the continuous loop button, the machine starts again from the beginning. Now you can sew this as long as you like. Now that's enough, let's stop. Let's take it out and take a look. I have to say, that looks super clean and neat. You can clearly see the well-shaped letters and the pretty bow. One bow in the middle. 
As I said earlier, we also have cursive lettering stitches, so I can delete the previous settings. Press the C button for that. Access the letter again. The cursive font this time, so A again for N. Browse forward, here too. There are upper and lower case letters, then I need N. N, N and an E. Let's try this out. So, machine's running. Now let's take a look. See these string threads here between the stitches? That's not a fault. When you're doing sewing, you need to trim these threads to just leave the letters on the fabric. When those little tails and thread ends are gone, your stitching will look super neat. This machine does great lettering stitches. Compared with other machines, you rarely get such a clear and neat lettering stitch. Now let me select a nice car motif or something like that. That's these programs back here, 69 or 70 for example. That means you can access the decorative stitches and then either use the arrow buttons or wipe the display. You can scroll through with your finger. Wiping and scrolling even is a little faster because we need to get up to 70. Just the same as with our smartphone. So, we are getting closer. 68, 69, where is it? Oh, look, there's a dog. Dogs are pretty. Now let's delete the previous settings and select the dog motif. A continuous loop of dogs. Let me just see. Now we can sew lots of dogs. These look really cute. So, raise the needle, lift the foot, take it out, cut the threads, done. There is the dog's design, and they are clearly distinguishable. With this machine you can work with twin needles. This means you need to install a second spool pin. Let's change to the regular presser foot. Then press this button here to access the standard program. Just our plain old straight stitch. Press this button on the left, and of course you need a twin needle. Let's see, the twin needle goes in here. But first you need to remove the other one. Right, the first upper thread has already been threaded. With the twin needle you can't use the threader anymore. So you need to do that manually. Now let's thread the second thread. I'm using a different color so you can distinguish it better. Threading is the same as for the first thread. The same path, always keep your thread taut. Go up and down again and make sure your needle is in top position. It is best to press the needle stop and down button beforehand so you can be absolutely sure that this will work. Now, as I said, you no longer can use the automatic threader with twin needles. You only appreciate the threader when you can't use it. So, there it is. Now I'll install the foot. So we're good to go. Now, when you need to shorten the hem of a t-shirt, this is a perfect way to do it. All right, let's go. We now have the two straight seams on the right side, and if we look at the wrong side, there's a zigzag. Now let's take a look. That's the way it's supposed to be. Here's the raw edge of the fabric that has been included in the seam. This is what it should look like. So your raw edge is hidden in the seam and you don't have to finish it in a separate step. This is the twin needle function. It also works on the 3300. What else have we got? The next thing I want to show you is how to sew on buttons. Lower the feet down for this. Change the foot. There is a special presser foot. That's this one. That goes in here. That's clamped. We also have a special button sewing program. This is program number 27. So you access the utility stitches and browse forward to 27. 24, 25, a little further. That was too far. That's way too far. That's where we need to go. 27, the program for sewing on buttons. We take our fabric, the feet dog is lowered. The only thing we now need is a needle. I'll install that. Let me see. There it is. 
The flat side of the needle must always face backwards. See, the needles have a flattened shank here. This flat side must face away from you, inside the needle all the way up. This is really important, otherwise the needle may loosen and the machine will not sew properly. Press the needle stop up down button twice and thread the machine. That's all you have to remember. Nothing can go wrong now. Start at one, then two, three, four, five into the threader, there and there. Once you get to know your machine and have a little more experience, this is really easy. Much better than threading by hand. Now I just need a piece of fabric, doesn't matter what. Place it under the foot, then take your button. Now make sure you center it under the foot correctly. Do a few stitches by turning the hand wheel to make sure the needle hits the holes in the button. If all is correct, press the foot pedal until the machine stops. So raise the needle, lift the foot, take it out, cut the threads, done. The button is sewn on, looks perfect. I'd like to point out one more special feature of the W6N5000 and that is the automatic thread cutter. I have now set the straight stitch with regular backstitching. This means that the machine will sew forward. Oh, I forgot to raise the feet. I have to do that first. So the machine sews a few stitches, then it backstitches and forth and here we go. At the other end I press the backstitching button again. The machine stitches back and forward again. That's fine so far. The 3300 model does that as well. But now the needle automatically remains down now. And now I can press this button for the thread cutter. The machine cuts the threads automatically, both the lower and upper thread. Now look, both threads tails are on the wrong side of the fabric. Now if you have a lot of little patchwork projects that you want to sew together, then the advantage is quite obvious. You don't have to spend hours cutting and trimming your threads. This is so much easier. You sew to the end and backstitch. The machine stops. The machine beeps to tell you, I'm done. You press the cutter button, both threads are cut and pulled to the wrong side of the fabric. Ladies and gentlemen, the W6N5000 can be turned into an embroidery machine in no time at all. You just need to remove the slide-on table and take the embroidery unit. I'll take the frame off just to be on the safe side. Push the embroidery unit onto the machine, connect the embroidery unit to the machine via the cable and then simply reassemble the frame. Now you have turned your sewing machine into an embroidery machine in no time. We now have an innovation for the models W6N3300, W6N5000 and W6N6000. We have included adjustable presser foot pressure. We can adjust the presser foot pressure in one, two, three steps. Normally the machines are set to level two. So far this has always been enough and it's also sufficient for 90% of all regular sewing operations. But if, for example, you want to sew a buttonhole on a particularly thick fabric, then of course you need as much pressure as possible so that the machine still feeds the fabric. In that case, set the pressure to level 3. Then the machine operates at maximum sewing pressure. Level 2 is normal and what we've used so far. And with level 1 you have the possibility to get really creative. So you can even paint with thread. You can do applique work. I can show you this here. You can sew a really tight applique stitch. Since the presser foot doesn't press so hard on the fabric, you can move the fabric under the foot easier. I'm going to briefly show you this. We use an applique stitch for something like this. Select your stitch, position your fabric and you're good to go. Now you don't have any problems with this fabric. You don't need to pull or push to feed the fabric and you can of course reproduce any shape with the applique. As you can see, it's really quick and of course easy. Now I'm closing my stitching around the circle. Take it out, cut the threads and done. Make sure you cut both threads, it's no problem at all. Your applique work is finished in no time, that's working out just fine. The next thing you can do, you can even start painting with the machine. For that you need really stable fabrics, craft felt for example. You can use your regular zigzag stitch for that. 
Please pay attention with the zigzag. Don't make the stitches too wide. So the stitch width should really be a maximum of 3 mm, otherwise the machine won't be able to process it. You also need to go down with the stitch length, somewhere around 0.4 or 0.3. Then you can start. Let's paint the P for paws. Let's do it. You see, you could paint entire pictures this way. Stop again. The needle is automatically up. Cut the threads. You see, it looks great and is fairly easy to do. Now let me also do the rounded line of the letter P, so you see that this doesn't only work with straight lines. For just as with applique work, the lowered presser foot pressure has the advantage that you can do curves quite easily. Always guide your fabric, and the easiest thing is to draw the lines on your fabric and use them as a guidance. Take it easy and go nice and slow to achieve a really smooth curve. Take it out, cut the threads and done. There's the P for pause, no problem, works really well. Of course, if you're feeling really creative, you can paint actual pictures. Birdhouse with a branch. Just position your fabric and off you go. Easy as ABC. As I said, it's best to draw the lines on your fabric beforehand, and then, of course, you can do something like that perfectly. This way up. The adjustable presser foot pressure also comes in handy with stretchy fabrics. With stretchy fabrics, you may have experienced wavy and wonky stitching. Your fabric is distorted while sewing. That's because stretchy fabrics have a certain give, and if the foot pressure is too high, the fabric is stretched out. So the lower the sewing foot pressure, the more even your seams will be. And remember to always use interfacing underneath. <laughs>